welcome to the second lecture on decision trees. So, as we mentioned before that we have a training set which is there before you a table like this and what I basically want is to draw a decision tree which best fits this table. In other words a tree which correctly predicts the final column yes or no as accurately as possible on this example. So, uh, as, as we have told that a decision tree is nothing but some attributes and then uh, branches as nodes and branching on them and finally, till you get to the leaf. So, the question that is to be answered is which attribute should I check first and then which attribute then which attribute and so on ok to decide. So, there are four attributes which one should I check first. Let me come back to the table. Uh, if you have actually uh, told, done what I told you to do that is think on uh, what intuitively is a good thing, you have probably done something like this. So, let me check among these four attributes which one is the best attribute for root. Okay. So, what I actually do is that let me say um, um, say temperature or start from this side wind wind suppose uh, my root is my wind mm -hmm. so let's see the root uh, breaks down this uh, this table the value of the wind it breaks down into two groups uh, the the one for which uh, wind is weak and one for which wind is strong. So, let us mark them. So, I will write w and s. So, or, or maybe t can cross. So, here wind is weak, 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 weak here, weak here, weak here and weak here. So, among the rows which I have ticked as weak, how many have yes as tennis and no as tennis. So, if I see, so 1 no, 3 yes, 2 no, 5 yes, 6 yes, 6 yes and 2 no. So, if I split my training examples into two groups based on the value of wing, wind based on the value of wind weak or strong if I split my examples into two group they actually each of the group actually from mixed. So, the, the uh, wind equal to weak group has two no year tennis and six years tennis mixed both are there both classes are there. Similarly, if I take wind as strong in the strong the cross I am putting So, how many yes? I have 1 no, 2 no, 3 no and 4 no and 2 yes. I have 4 no and 2 yes. So, again, so if I um, if I use say something like this, if I check on wind and if I split into two group weak and strong in the weak group. I have 2 no and 6 yes, 2 blue and 6 red for rows and here I have 6 no, 6 no let me check, uh, 5 no, 5 no. I may be wrong, I am an old man, I may be wrong, you do it properly. Five no, one, two, one, two, three, four, four no actually. Four no 
chalo and how many years in the crosses it is going to equal to strom i have i have 1 years 2 years 3 years yes 3 years 3 years i have 4 no and 3 years hmm. so the attribute wind is not so good at distinguishing between platonic yes and platonic platonic no so it's not so good among the uh, there are some people uh, who uh, have wind equal to weak and they are both no and no and some are yes and so on hmm. it's like it's like a, a, the following example so suppose i want to uh, I, I i describe a student uh, by say three attributes how tall is she? Uh, how tall is she? What is her mother tongue? How many hours she studies? And and uh, how many hours she sleeps? Hmm. So maybe by these four attributes, I describe a student, and I see the height of the student, and similarly the mother tongue of the student, uh, and I, I I want to put the student into two categories one who does good in the class one who does not do good in the class uh, oh, well well everybody is good uh, suppose by by marks somebody get good marks somebody does not get good marks hmm. and i want to predict looking at these four values uh, what type of student it is whether she will get a good mark or she gets a bad mark hmm. suppose i am a recruitment company or something i want to do it okay and um, i find that this attribute height and maybe it has two values tall and short or maybe three values tall short and medium uh, this does not really help me in predicting whether she will get good marks or bad marks people who are tall get good and bad marks people who are short also get good and bad marks similarly if i look at mother tongue uh, say bengali or telugu or hindi or tamil uh, that also there are Bengali people who are good and bad, there are Tamil people who are good and bad. So, that also does not really help me distinguish, but maybe if I look at hour of study, maybe again uh, for the sake of simplicity two categories long and short and then I find that people who study long hours do good most of the time, most of the time. Okay. Uh, so, that is a better attribute, that is a better attribute because it helped me uh, segregate the training set into two groups, where each of the group have most of the people from one of the classes. So, for example, let us look into this attribute, let me erase this, let me erase this and let me Mm, okay, so wind I have already checked. Uh, wind I have already checked. Let me check my uh, temperature. Not let me directly go to at, uh, outlook. Hmm. So outlook has three values. So it will actually uh, segregate this fourteen days D one to D fourteen into three groups. Hmm, hmm. So let me check the one with outlook sunny. I will put a tick on them. So, this one, this one, where else sunny, this one, where else sunny, this one, okay. And, okay. And the uh, overcast, maybe I put a cross, overcast is this, overcast is this, overcast is this, and overcast is this. And rain, I put a dot, this and this and this and this and this. So, I have four ticks meaning sunny, four crosses meaning overcast and five dots meaning red. If I write down this 14 examples, if I write down outlook, outlook as an attribute, it will split the 14 examples into two groups. So, the sunny group has sunny group has four examples, the overcast group has 
uh, four examples and uh, so this is sunny, this is overcast, the rain group has five examples. Is it or am I making a mistake? I think I am making a mistake. Uh, five examples anyway, does not matter. Uh, so, uh, now this 4, 4, 5, let me see what is their yes no distribution tennis. So, out of the four sunny, this tick, three are yes, one is no. Out of this four rain, the crosses, the four rain, the crosses, all four are yes, zero no. And out of the five rain, uh, four are yes and one is no. So, you see this is a relatively better, so if I just uh, this is a relatively better discriminator between yes and no, ah, I missed something, I missed something, this is a this is a dot. So, this I actually have, I actually have two nodes here, this is six probably, because my handwriting is very poor, pardon it. So, uh, uh, so, I have you see a relatively better discriminator in the sense that okay, only one example I am making a mistake, no example I am making a mistake and only two examples I am mistake, making a mistake. Whereas, in the case of wind, I was it was more confusing, okay. it was more confusing. So, maybe this outlook attribute is a better predictor, it is a better, it is the first thing that you should check when you want to build a decent, you should check it at the root. Once that is done, maybe you can check. So maybe for furthermore, among these four examples which have uh, outlook equal to sunny, you can further check humidity. And among these, you can so here uh, everything is yes. So I can directly put yes as a leaf node here. This I can further check maybe humidity. This I can further check maybe temperature or something and so on. I can build the tree further. Okay, but as a first cut, this is the best attribute. In other words, if you see what is my property of when I am calling something as a leaf and not spreading, uh, uh, not splitting it further. I am calling something as a leaf when all the examples which come to that node belong to a single class. Hmm. So, among these three possibilities, only this belongs to yes, uh, single class yes. So, moment it becomes a single class or a pure class, it is a leaf. So, in other words, I want a leaf, finally I want a leaf, where all the examples which will be pushed down to that leaf will belong to only one class. And I do this progressively in the sense that uh, I, I, I do it in a greedy way. That means, first I, I, I try to make a split using the root which makes each of the childs of the root as pure as possible. And each of the style, if they are not pure, if they are pure that is a leaf, if they are not pure, I further split so that they become even more pure till they are absolutely pure. Pure, pure means here that they belong to a single class. So, let me try to explain, oh sorry, let me try to explain you this way, explain it to you this way. Mm. So, uh, see, mm, I, I said that uh, the, this each instance I can represent as a four dimensional vector. For example, d 1 I can represent as a four dimensional vector 
having attribute value sunny, hot, high and weak for tuple. Okay. And uh, for, for ease of visualization, let me say I uh, not 4, I have only 2 attributes, attribute 1 and attribute 2. And uh, so, so, any instance is nothing but a tuple of 2 values, 1 value and attribute 1 value and attribute 2 value. So, I can always also visualize them as points in 2 dimensional space coordinates where these values are the coordinate values. So, I can ac actually plot them as my points. So, I, I can plot them as these points, these points, all the training set are these points in 2 dimensional space. And uh, in this example, what I have done is that I have marked all the yes class points as plus and I have marked all the no class points as minus. Okay. So, what is my uh, what is my decision tree node split doing actually? Let us see. Suppose, I have a decision tree node which says that um, attribute 1 has th I, I check at root node the attribute 1 and I split it into th th say 3 branches, one branch having attribute 1 value greater than something, another less than something, another between these two values. So, suppose I call this as v 1, this as v 2 and if attribute 1 greater than v 1, I check on attribute 1, if the value is greater than v 1 1 branch, less than v 2 another branch, between v 1 and v 2 is the third branch. Okay. And let me see among these points that I have drawn which satisfies this, which satisfies this and which satisfies this. So, all the points here will be pushed down to this branch, all the points here will be pushed down to the branch and all the points here will be pushed down to this branch. In other words, I can think of like this, each of the branch is drawing a vertical line like this. So, this is branch 1, this is branch 2 and this is branch 3. Okay. So, um, and, and uh, all the points lying right of this branch 1 is in this branch, in this line, right of this line is in this, left of this line is in this and in between is this. Okay. So, this splitting is equivalent to drawing this vertical line. So, uh, this vertical lines will uh, the splitting uh, separates the training examples into 3 categories. This vertical lines also separate this training line tra training points into 3 categories. So, they are equivalent. Okay. Mm. Note that I could have also done the following instead of attribute 1 I could have asked a question on attribute 2 also. Maybe I could have made a two way split say value uh, u 1, u 2 or only u 1 sorry. So, so, so. So, I have a value I asked a question I asked a question whether a 2 is greater than this value u 
and all the points less than u lie in this branch greater than equal to u lie in this branch. So, you see all these points will come here and all these points will come here. Okay. So, uh, I could have if, if I if I split using A 2 I will get some split like this if I split using if I split using A 1 I will get a split like this. Now, you tell me if my goal. So, uh, one thing you think also is that I could have not stopped here. So, using A 1 I first make a split 3 groups and I notice that this middle group is already pure. I put it as negative leaf. The third group is already pure. I put it as plus, whereas this first group, so third group, second group, the first group is not pure. How to make it pure? Split further on attribute 2. Okay. So, again check on A 2, again check on A 2 and suppose for a value u. And if the value is less than u, I call it minus, greater than u, I call it plus. Now, you see that this decision tree correctly classifies all the example, hmm. correctly classifies all the example and corresponds to a axis parallel splits looking like this. axis parallel splits looking like this. So, uh, uh, my if I this tree, so first a 1 then a 2 will do it like this. Suppose, I reverse it, I make it first a 2 then a 1. So, first on a 2 then on a 1. So, I will do maybe I will do this and then again on a 1 I will split this, again on a 1 I will split this. So, a 2 then on a 1, one split a 1, this into 2, this again into 3, I have to do this. So, I will need more number of splits. Okay. So, uh, maybe the other tree first a, two, a 1 then a 2 is better. Maybe if I have asked you to draw axis parallel lines to sort of split this up into uh, into two classes, you have you do have uh, done the first tree only. Yeah, you should have you would have probably done the first tree only. Okay. Mm, so mm, mm, why I have drawn the first tree? Because splitting on A one on three values give me better purities in the leaps they gave me better purities this is pure this is pure this is impure okay then the other one all right also note that both these trees are equally correct maybe one is more complex than the bigger than the deeper than the other okay but both are equally correct so uh, for a single data set you can actually have uh, you can actually have multiple trees which are correct there may be many number of trees which are correct also note one more thing that whatever be the data distribution okay whatever be the data distribution suppose I have some positive points sitting here 
and some positive point sitting here. Okay, maybe not this. Okay, let me draw it like this. Mm, if I have some positive point sitting here, I could have also classified, mm, or maybe some negative point sitting here. I could have also classified. How would I classify? Maybe I'll get a longer tree. What I'll do is that I'll split like this. This is pure, this is pure, this is pure, this is pure. This I will split like this. So, this is pure, this is impure, this I will further split. So, one extra split. Okay. So, now I get. So, what is the equivalent tree? If you draw, you will get a deeper tree. Okay. So, Mm. So, this is the intuition. So, what I will do in my next lecture is to uh, quantify this notion of purity of a class by a formula, by a function, by a measure which we will use to construct the algorithm. Okay. So, um, we will we'll call it as a decision tree construction algorithm, but the intuition is this try to make the best split first, then the next best, then the next best, greedy algorithm okay, till you get a pure class in the leaf, do it by the smallest tree possible. All right, thank you for today.